This is the fourth part in a short tutorial series in which I show you how to make mixed reality experiences for the MetaQuest 3 using the Unity game engine. In the previous part, we explored methods for rendering the plane data produced during the space setup process of the Quest. Specifically, we looked at how to create our own custom plane visualizations. Additionally, we configured a button on the touch controller to switch the plane visualization on and off. This video assumes that you have completed the previous tutorials in this series. If you have not, then please do so before continuing. You can find a link to the tutorial series playlist in the description. In this tutorial, we will continue our exploration of planes. A primary application of planes is to create the illusion of interaction between virtual objects and the real world. For example, you could use the plane data to make a virtual object appear to sit on top of a table, or attached to a wall, or fly in through a window. To give you a taste of what is possible, this tutorial will show you how to spawn some cubes on top of a table plane. We will set up a touch controller so that you can grab the cubes and throw them across the room. You will then be able to observe how the cubes appear to bounce off surfaces in your real environment. OK, let's pick up right where we left off in our last video. Open the Unity scene that we were working on previously. Let's tackle the touch controller configuration first. To enable the grabbing of objects via your touch controllers, you will need to use a specific component called the XR Direct Interactor. As we are setting things up primarily to demonstrate some physics interactions, we are going to apply the grabbing ability to the right-hand controller only. However, you may well want to implement grabbing on both of your controllers in your own projects. Anyway, let's go to the hierarchy view and expand the XR origin. Within the XR origin, attached to the camera offset, you should find the right controller game object. Select it. Now go to the inspector panel. If you scroll down and attempt to add an XR Direct Interactor, you will find that you won't be able to. This is because you cannot have both an XR Direct Interactor and an XR Ray Interactor attached to the same object. So, let's first remove all of the components relating to the XR Ray Interactor. Delete the XR Interactor Line Visual, then remove the Line Renderer, and lastly, remove the XR Ray Interactor itself. Now, hit the Add Component button and add the XR Direct Interactor. For the XR Direct Interactor to work, it must be paired with a Collider component. A collider is crucial as it defines the spatial volume where collisions with interactable objects are detected. Without a collider, the XR Direct Interactor cannot tell when it has come into contact with an interactable object, making it impossible to grab, push or perform any other form of direct manipulation on the object. In this instance we are going to use a sphere collider. Hit the Add Component button to add one to the right controller. The XR Direct Interactor will detect and work with this collider automatically. There are a couple of changes we will need to make to the Sphere Collider, however. The first thing we need to do is tick the Is Trigger checkbox. This is important as, by default, the collider will behave as a solid object that physically blocks other colliders. However, with Is Trigger enabled, the collider instead behaves as a trigger zone. This means that the collider will not physically block other objects. It will, however, fire off certain collision events whenever another collider comes into contact with it. These collision events can be responded to using functions like onTriggerEnter, onTriggerStay, and onTriggerExit. Importantly, the XR Direct Interactor also responds to these events. Now, let's adjust the Sphere Collider's radius as it is currently far too large. Set it to 0.05. Okay, we now have our right-hand controller set up so that we will be able to pick up objects with it. Let's move on to creating the grabbable cube, which we will later spawn on top of a table. Go to the hierarchy view and right-click in the empty area beneath the scene objects. A context menu should appear. From the menu, select 3D object and then cube. Rename the cube to grabbable cube. Make sure that the grabbable cube is positioned at the scene origin, i.e. position 0, 0, 0. The cube is also far too big for our purposes. Set all of its scale components to 0 
Now, in order to make this cube actually grabbable, we need to add a component called XR Grab Interactable. With the grabbable cube still selected, go to the inspector and hit the Add Component button. Find and add the XR Grab Interactable. The XR Grab Interactable provides the functionality we need with its default settings, that is, the ability to grab and throw the cube. Notice that a rigid body component has also been added automatically, as this is required by the XR Grab Interactable. The rigid body also integrates the cube into the physics simulation. This means that it will react to physical forces. For instance, the cube can be thrown and will bounce off other physics-enabled objects in the scene. OK. In due course, we will set up our app so that pressing the trigger button on the right controller spawns a grabbable cube. But before we spawn the cube, it needs to be converted into a prefab. Go to the Project panel and select the Prefabs folder. Now drag the grabbable cube from the hierarchy view into this folder. This simple action has turned grabbable cube into a prefab. You can now delete the instance of grabbable cube from the hierarchy view. We are now ready to add some cube spawning functionality to our scene controller script, which is attached to the XR origin. So in the hierarchy view, select the XR origin and then head over to the inspector. Double click the scene controller script to open it in Visual Studio or Alternative Code Editor. We will need to detect each time the user presses the trigger button on the right-hand controller. By default, the trigger button is mapped to the Activate action. Therefore, we need a reference to this, so we can detect whenever the Activate action is performed. I'm adding a reference to the Activate action now. Notice that we have preceded the Input Action reference with the Serialize field attribute. This makes the reference available in the Unity Editor's inspector, which in turn allows us to link the Activate action to this reference via the inspector. We will set this up once we return to Unity. For now, let's continue with this script. Let's add a game object variable to hold a reference to our grabbable cube prefab. Again, this is preceded by the Serialize field attribute, as we will be linking our grabbable cube prefab to this script later. Now scroll down to the start function. At the bottom, you will notice that we subscribe to a couple of events. Directly below this, type the following line. As you can see, we have subscribed to the action performed event of the underscore activate action variable. Visual Studio's code completion has also kindly created the corresponding event handler for us, the on activate action event handler. Remember, we want to spawn a grabbable cube each time the right hand trigger button is pressed. As you know, this trigger button is mapped directly to the activate action. Therefore, we are going to create a spawn grabbable cube function and we are going to call it directly from the on activate action event handler. OK, I'm going to fill out the spawn grabbable cube function with the required code. Let's take a look at what this code does. It's quite straightforward. Basically, we go through each and every plane in the quest's room model and look for any planes that are classified as table. If a table plane is found, we simply instantiate a grabbable cube at a position just above this plane. Since this code is looking for tables, please ensure that you have at least one table defined in your quest's space setup before you run this app. Now scroll down to the bottom of the script, find the onDestroy function. To keep things clean and tidy, let's unsubscribe from the activate action performed event. OK, we are done here. Save the scene controller script and return to the Unity editor. Now that we are back in Unity, Let's hook our activate action up to the corresponding reference in the scene controller script. With the XR origin still selected, go to the inspector and find the scene controller script component. Notice that the activate action variable is exposed. Go to activate action and click the target icon to the right of the empty field. A list of available input actions will appear. Find the right hand activate action and double click to select it. Next, we want to hook up our grabbable cube prefab to the scene controller script. This will allow the scene controller to spawn new instances of the grabbable cube whenever the right trigger button is pressed. Select the prefabs folder from the project view. In this folder, you should see the grabbable cube prefab. Drag the prefab onto the corresponding grabbable cube field on the scene controller script. OK, we are more or less finished. 
Before you test the app, I would recommend disabling the zombie character so that he does not obscure the grabbable cubes. In any case, make sure you save your work and then head over to Build Settings. Make sure that your quest is connected, then launch a new build. If everything is set up correctly, your app should be working as follows. Pressing the trigger button on your right-hand controller should spawn a grabbable cube on top of any table planes. Pressing the A button should toggle your plane visualization. Pressing the right-hand grip button should allow you to grab the cube. You should be able to drop or throw the cube by releasing this button. OK, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. In the next episode, we will take a look at spatial anchors. These will allow us to securely anchor virtual objects to precise locations in our physical environment. Anyway, if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye and happy questing.